Short answer, yes. Long answer. Readers, this read us reacts threw me for a loop for real for real. Because out of all the things that I expected Netflix to invest in, never in my wildest nightmares would I have ever thought that it would be in a dude who thought that the comic book ending for Kick-Ass 1 was okay. I'm of course talking about Netflix's decision to purchase Mark Millar's comic book company, Millar World, making this the third imprint to be purchased by a multimedia conglomerate. Now, from what we've learned about this deal, neither the previously mentioned Kick-Ass or Kingsman franchises are a part of it, since the film rights are still owned by Lionsgate and 20th Century Fox, respectively. Which, in my opinion, may be better off. They actually made those properties enjoyable. Not to say that Netflix isn't capable of doing that themselves, but something tells me that with them buying Millar World, they're also buying Mark Millar. And that's just like the worst bundle suggested by Amazon on the face of this earth. Like, I'm up here trying to buy a Dr. Doom statue and you think that it'll go perfect with some KY jelly. The fu- What? One of these things is not like the other. One of these things does not belong. I mean, the KY jelly would make more sense if I was buying a Hulk statue or a Shaman Thrall poster, but not Dr. Doom. Now, I know what you're thinking, but Moran, that's fine for Mark Millar, but what about Netflix? Can they really afford to be buying comic book companies when they're in so much debt? Ah, you're referring to the news article posted by the LA Times. The one that reported that because of them shilling out cash for original series and movies, Netflix is actually $20 billion in debt. Don't, don't, you, don't you just love capitalism? Well, readers, about that news article, the LA Times may have jumped the gun with that information. Not saying that parts of it weren't accurate, mind you. It's just that the $20 billion number that was mentioned in said article isn't all completely dead. Two days after the article was released, they updated it with the proper information regarding said number, revealing that a little bit more than three-fourths of that number is actually tied in contracts and doesn't really translate to short-term debt. The amount of debt that Netflix is actually in is around $4.3 billion. Which to Netflix is the same as us common folk making monthly payments on our $13,000 pre-owned Kia. And it's only a Kia because like Netflix, we have to both stunt and pay our rent on time. So with that information, coupled with the fact that Netflix brings in about a billion dollars per month regularly, I'm pretty sure their purchase of Millar World wasn't one that they're going to financially regret when their credit card bill comes in the mail next week. They'll probably only morally regret it because now they have to deal with Mark Millar in real life. But hey, you get what you pay for. So readers, your homework assignment for the day. Write in the comments section below what you think about Netflix's purchase of Millar World. Or do you think Millar will want direct involvement in the properties once Netflix starts making the move to push them to TV and movies? Here's me hoping that they don't. Because the last thing I want to see on Netflix is the common use of rape and the motherfucker making a habit of shooting children. Mark Millar did that. In the Kick-Ass 2 comic. Just so you know. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Because I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and every other Friday. But until then, this is Redis 101. Class dismissed.